Hello and welcome. We are so glad to have you today for the Capital Area School Development Association Virtual College Fair. We have a great series of uh, panelists here for you today, but I want to start today by giving you a few housekeeping announcements. You may use the Q&A button on your screen at any time to submit questions to our presenters. There's no reason to wait until a certain institution is presenting to shoot those questions in. Go ahead and use the Q&A uh, button for any question to any of our panelists at any time. Just a note that your camera and mic are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you today. And of course, this is one of many different sessions happening both today and tomorrow. So make sure that you sign up for additional sessions. But of course, this presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week at strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. I'll make sure and put that in the chat for everyone as well. But now for our main events, we are going to turn it over to our wonderful presenters and we're going to kick it off today with Cuca College, whenever you are ready. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I am Kyla Winnell. I am an admissions counselor for Cuca College. As you can see, we're situated right on Cuca Lake. So you get to live lake life year round, which is always a bonus. We are a four year institution as well as a private college. And we do have some really great academic scholarships available uh, being a private institution. We're also a residential campus. All of our students will mainly live on campus. So we have housing um, situated for just freshmen and then upperclassmen housing for sophomores through seniors, such as suite styles and apartments on campus. And we also are a liberal arts college. So you'll get those core courses your first few years um, to really help give you that solid base before you start getting into your core courses. And we are a small institution as well. So we have a little under 1200 undergrad students. So you really get that one on one with professors. Your average class size is going to be about 18 students, um, which is really nice, especially in those harder courses and your upper level classes. Academics wise, we have 37 majors available for students, 28 minors. 30 plus concentrations and eight pre-professional programs. Um, so we have a lot to choose from. Make sure when you're looking at colleges, they have at least your top three, just in case you ever do decide to, that you change your mind. Um, some popular majors that we do offer is our American Sign Language and English Interpreting Program. Um, some amazing professors. That's a common one that students might minor in as well if they decide to do something else. Our education programs are popular, as well as our biology programs, our occupational therapy program, and psychology. Um, all have really great hands-on professors. Um, they're there for the students. Um, so you can't go wrong with any major. And then at CUCA, something that's very unique to us is something that we do field period. Um, it is where every student in every single major starting your freshman year can do an internship, cultural experience, community service, spiritual exploration, or artistic endeavor. Um, it's 140 hours and you do it in between the semesters. So you're not balancing an internship and classes at the same time. Um, what's really cool about it is you get to design it. The sky's the limit with what you wanna do. Um, so for students that might be interested in doing, you know, occupational therapy, you might go into a school setting um, and, you know, your freshman year, you do this internship and then you decide, oh, no, OK, this is not the right path for me. You could easily change your major freshman year to psychology, you know, or nursing or something else that, you know, you end up having a passion for. Um, so you don't go, you know, two, three years into that major and then finding out you don't like it. So it's a really great program to help you get that, you know, decision early on on what you want to do, um, as well as it helps you network. Um, we have a 96% placement rate within six months of graduation, and we really do think that this field period opportunity for our students really does help that. Some of our students get job offers from their field periods, um, you know, or they, you know, get really great networking. So they know someone who knows someone and they end up getting a job that way. Um, it's a really great program if you're looking for that hands-on experience um, starting right away. 
So this is just some examples of where our students have gone. We have students that have done cultural experiences in Nicaragua, um, England, as well as Thailand, which is my favorite. They got to play with elephants and do community service. Who does not want to play with elephants? Um, so that's always a fun experience if you're looking to travel while in college. And then if you're looking for that internship experience, getting that, you know, networking and putting things on your resume early on. We have students that have done internships at WAM TV, um, the sheriff's office and nursing home um, to really help you decide what career choice is right for you. And we also are a division three college. So we just joined the Empire Eight Conference. So less travel for our student athletes, which is awesome. So if you're interested, you can always fill out a recruit me form on our uh, athletic webpage. Um, so we have several sports for you to choose from, as well as some of our co-ed sports like cheerleading, esports, gaming, uh, dance, and our step team. And we are a rolling admissions as well. So if you have not started the application process, it's not too late. Um, it is free and we only require an official high school transcript, your application, one letter of recommendation as well from a core teacher or your school counselor. And we are SAT, ACT optional. So no uh, scores are needed for us. Um, and you can submit that on the Common App or the CUCA website, it's free either way. And we do have academic scholarships available to students. So if you are accepted, you automatically get an academic scholarship if you are accepted to CUCA. So it's based on your major when you apply. Um, so if you have an 80% GPA to 100% GPA, you automatically will qualify for an academic scholarship uh, every single year that you're at CUCA. It's locked in place um, and so it won't move. So it's always kind of nice to know you get that scholarship every single year. Um, and we do have CUCA College Family Awards as well. Um, and so if you have another family member that's attending CUCA, um, you also could earn an additional thousand. Um, but something to keep in mind is, you know, with private colleges, they do have, you know, other ways for, you know, financial aid, um, some grants, different things like that. So, you know, don't rule out a private college just because of that sticker price, you know, so definitely work with your admissions counselor. All right, I'll pass it on to whoever's next. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cuca College. That was fantastic. We are going to go now to Lemoyne College whenever you are ready. All right, thank you. Let me just pull up my screen. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Megan Hill, and I am an undergraduate admissions counselor at Lemoyne, and I'm also a Lemoyne alum. I graduated in 2019 with a major in English and a concentration in literature, as well as a minor in theater. Thank you for joining us. Let me tell you a little bit about Lemoyne College. So Lemoyne is in the college town suburbs of Syracuse, New York, and you'll find us a four year private liberal arts college, the youngest of 27 US Jesuit colleges and what many refer to as central New York's state's hidden gem. The 160 acre hilltop campus known as the Heights is home to 2,800 undergraduate students, most of whom live on a residential campus. Here's our campus right here. Let me show you the city of Syracuse a little bit. So the city of Syracuse is in the center of New York State. Uh, it's about a 46 hour drive from most major cities in the Northeast. So it's just minutes from regional bus and train depots as well as an international airport. While our students benefit from the perks of attending a smaller college, our location close to a city as well as a large university creates a true college town experience, including shopping, dining, outdoor activities like hiking and skiing, as well as plenty of internship opportunities. As you're considering colleges, you might have heard the term Jesuit education, but you might not know exactly what that entails. When learning about Jesuit colleges, you'll also often hear the phrase cura personalis, which means care of the whole person. It's an education with a focus on the mind, body, and soul, as well as a path to develop a love of learning and growth that you'll take with you long after you graduate. Jesuits themselves are Catholic priests who are educators, and Jesuit colleges draw on the principles of teaching students holistically. Lemoyne students come from a variety of different backgrounds, interests, personal and religious beliefs. You don't need to be Catholic to go to a Jesuit school. This style of education helps you create a community of well-rounded, critical thinking global citizens. At Lemoyne, giving back to our community is a part of who we are. 
And you can see that reflected in our service learning opportunities for students, as well as plenty of volunteer opportunities within many of our clubs. When our students are asked about why they chose Lemoyne, their answers are usually very similar. A sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, strong connection to faculty and staff, kindness, mutual respect, among other reasons. Our average class size is 20 to 22 students, and our student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1 helps to foster connections both within and outside of the classroom. Our professors are at the tops of their fields and their focus is your education. So if you're looking to engage in deep conversation and get some hands-on experience within the classroom, access those internships and opportunities, be actively engaged in your community through service, then Lemoyne might just be a place for you to thrive. Our core curriculum, innovative classes and dedicated faculty and staff work to prepare our students well for success during their academic careers and also for life after college. Our placement rate based on a 2019 survey in a career or graduate program of their choice within six months of their graduation is 98%. The Lemoyne student appreciates a comprehensive liberal arts education with preparation for specific career paths through popular majors such as business, biology, nursing, political science, theater, myself personally, psychology and education, just to name a few. At Lemoyne, we have three schools, as you can see on the screen right here, the College of Arts and Sciences, the Mann School of Business and our Purcell School of Professional Studies. These colleges though are not mutually exclusive. You can take classes in any of our schools and study an interdisciplinary curriculum that fulfills a variety of interests. We also offer a number of accelerated master degrees programs and partnership programs, including but not limited to our direct entry PA program, nursing programs, occupational therapy, physical therapy, a five-year MBA, three plus three law, engineering, among others. In addition to world-class learning and career opportunities, students will find a warm and welcoming college atmosphere with a vibrant and engaging social scene. Thanks to championship level Division II Athletics, our Performing Arts Center, Lemoyne sponsored events and activities in over 80 clubs and organizations. Actually, every year, the number of clubs and organizations grows and evolve because we really value our student initiative and the ability to found new clubs in addition to our already existing athletic academic, performing arts, service clubs, and more. The possibilities for experiencing life outside of campus are also in abundance with a variety of study abroad locations, national and international class trips, service-based excursions, and research opportunities, in addition to our guaranteed internship program. So our applicant profile is pretty straightforward. We want well-rounded, curious, and motivated students who are willing to challenge themselves within and outside of the classroom. The average GPA of a student accepted to Lemoyne is a 3.5 or a B plus, and we are test optional for admissions. Applying to Lemoyne is simple as you can apply for free via the Common App or submit our Lemoyne application, and we don't have a preference for which application that you choose to submit. Your completed application includes not only the physical application, but also your personal statement, your official high school transcript, as well as at least one letter of recommendation from your guidance counselor or three supplemental recommendations from other sources. We do offer early action with a deadline of November 15th. Um, as a reminder though, early action is not binding. So if you apply to the school early action, that's not, you don't have to go there necessarily. Um, and we also offer rolling admission. Academically competitive students will find themselves as a recipient of a merit scholarship of up to $25,000. And last but not least, I just wanna mention that we are having in-person events uh, and we have plenty of scheduled events available on our website. And you can feel free to reach out through the chat or email me to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much. Awesome, six minutes on the dot, Lemoyne College. Perfect job. We're going to go now to Nazareth College whenever you are ready. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us. My name is Sean Hanlon. I'm Associate Director of Admissions here at Nazareth College, and I'm going to get my screen up here. Ready to roll, and I'd like to tell you why it's a great day to be a Golden Flyer here. And um, so without rambling on too much about uh, all the details of Nazareth, um, it's a great day to be a Golden Flyer um, for myself personally. My daughter's a graduate of Nazareth College, and so um, her experience here really shaped my belief. I taught a boarding school for 27 years before I started working here in the admissions office at Nazareth uh, about 10 years ago. And 
what I want to share is just kind of the transformation of place during that time. Um, you know, we, we offer a great set of programs um, from, you know, the liberal arts core that we offer to professional programs like physical therapy, occupational therapy. We have our own on-campus clinic that are coordinated with those. We have a nursing program, which we renovated our nursing facilities about five years ago to the tune of about a million dollars. So that really just shapes kind of my theme of Nazareth in terms of the investment in the community that's going on here. And so, you know, while you look at some of the numbers that I've shared on the screen right there, the small classes, low student faculty ratio, highlighted by uh, the number of Fulbright scholars that we've had over the years. Um, and so our students have great opportunities to go beyond that of just the campus uh, community here. But before I get into kind of the outside opportunities that exist, if you look at the Nazareth from a holistic standpoint, this is our objective, this is our goal, is uh, social justice for the greater good. Um, we, it's part of our DNA. Uh, the Sisters of St. Joseph founded Nazareth um, many years ago. We are no longer affiliated with the Catholic Church. I know Nazareth kind of gives the uh, idea that we are a religious school. Um, we are still a, um, actually a multi-faith campus. We still have, um, a strong religious uh, studies program, but as far as requirement, it's only part of our liberal arts core. And uh, but the opportunities there for students to practice their faith in all denominations that are just about out there. But um, health and well-being, the intellectual pathways, uh, just that whole experience is what we want to engage, uh, help our students engage in in the community at Nazareth. So. As far as opportunities and options here, uh, we have a long list of them, as you can see here, some general ideas, as I was uh, alluding to before, with health and human services, education, and so on and so forth. Uh, but um, also within that structure, we have a strong music program, uh, music education, musical theater, um, all of which do require auditions in order to uh, be a part as far as majoring in those programs as well. But through that experiential learning, we want to provide the support for um, our students as well. And so again, when I, I, one of the themes that I like to um, put into my presentations is this notion of investment, investment in the students. So um, if you look at the lower left-hand corner of that box there, um, every student is assigned a career coach in addition to having an academic advisor. So, so your academic advisor will be uh, meeting with you at least uh, once per term to make sure that you're on point, you're on track, and uh, getting the guidance you need in order to uh, get the, into the courses you need and to graduate on time. Um, so the career coach is there as support to help you. Well, we want you to keep both feet in the present. Uh, we also want you to think about down the line, especially if you're coming in undecided. I mean, I know many students will come into Nazareth thinking, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a teacher, which is great, uh, but we have a lot of students who either change their minds out of those areas uh, that they start at, or they're just not sure where they want to go. So we want to give you that support that's needed, and it starts uh, actually the day you deposit. So you'll have access to your career coach uh, to help guide you through that process. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, we want you to look at off-campus opportunities. So we have a robust travel abroad program. Of course, COVID at the moment has put a little bit of a pinch on that, but um, uh, we offer a lot of opportunities. We have partnerships all over the world um, for our students and um, a large number of our students take part. In fact, um, <laughs> continuing with my theme of investment, um, we have this grant that we uh, instituted a few years ago called the SPARK Grant. And um, I did mention study abroad. And so that's one of the components of which you can utilize that SPARK grant for, which is at a minimum a $1,500 grant. Uh, but as you can see on the screen, you can get up to 3,900 as part of your research that you might be doing. Uh, the research could be on campus, it could be off campus, but uh, our Center for Life's work, your career coach can help you put that together as part of your um, academic programs. Because we want to make sure that you get off on the right foot and make sure you're kind of heading in the direction that 
A, either you want or you should be heading towards. And so having that guidance is key. On campus, um, you know, like many of our other uh, uh, colleges that are here today, we want you to feel that sense of community and that you belong, okay? And I'm rambling here and I see that my time is coming to an end, but um, you know, that's part of our campus life. And as far as what we offer, we're a division three athletic school, but um, you know, the investment, we have a beautiful field house that we've just built, uh, as you can see pictured here. Uh, that's the latest investment also in our music and arts program as well. So um, I think that's the end of my rope. So um, again, I'm Sean Hanlon, Nazareth College. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Nazareth College. People here attending have no idea how fast those six minutes go by, but you all are doing a fantastic job giving us the important information we need about your, your campuses, so thank you. We are going to hear now from Niagara University. I wanna remind everyone that the Q&A is open, so go ahead and submit those questions. And uh, Niagara, whenever you are ready, take it away. Awesome, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. So yeah, Niagara University, we, uh, and thank you so much for the attendees that are being here today. Uh, I'm definitely gonna go through, give you some information here, but you know, you're sitting here and you're hearing six minute presentation after six minute presentation. Us admissions counselors, we all generally start to sound the same. We have beautiful campuses. Uh, we have great majors. We have great opportunities for you. So for me, and what I wanna do today is at least kind of just break down why, who is Niagara University? How are we different and, and what's going on here? So we are, um, a four-year private Catholic institution as well, a couple other private schools in here. We are located less than 10 minutes from Niagara Falls. Uh, so we are right on the gorge, right across the street from Canada. It's a 180-acre campus. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and they are, we have over 80 different majors housed within four different colleges. And I think all of you are on here today trying to find some schools that are generally interesting to you. Uh, but at the same time, um, also trying to find schools that have the right major in order to um, find the right school that's going to fit for you. So I'm going to spend like a minute or two on just the majors that we offer. We have, uh, like I said, a couple colleges in here, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Business, College of Education, and College of Hospitality and Tourism. Within those colleges, we have a ton of different majors, especially the arts and sciences. It's ginormous. Um, but some of our popular majors and things that we offer are our nursing program, criminal justice, um, our College of Business is very popular, education and hospitality. Um, for each of those specific colleges, there's a lot of different stats and a lot of different numbers that I know a lot of uh, students are interested in. So for our College of Hospitality and Tourism, we have 100% placement for our students after graduation, meaning they're going off to grad school or they're going off into their career after they graduate. They're 100%, which is so awesome. I love talking about that. Criminal justice, criminology, criminal justice. I know that's a big field. A lot of students are going in there. 98% are going to grad school or employed after graduation as well. College of Education, another 100% of students are being placed uh, at, in either grad school or um, employment after that. So pretty impressive stats that I love talking about, being able to kind of give you some specifics. Uh, but the most interesting piece that I wanna talk about in terms of academics that we offer and the most unique opportunity that Niagara University has to offer is for those of you that are sitting there like, I have absolutely no idea. I'm not sure what I wanna do. I don't even have an idea. Or maybe you're thinking a couple things like biochemistry and theater, something that's completely different from each other. So what Niagara University offers is we have what we call an academic exploration program. That means you can come to Niagara your first two years, you can explore any class of any major. So you can take, test the waters. You like some business classes, you like those bio classes, you like those theater classes, you take more of them. You take a criminal justice class, you're like, ooh, not for me. For me, it was a computer and sciences class, not for me, take less of them. Over the course of your two years, you meet with an advisor six times over that year. So three times a semester. By the end of your sophomore year, you, you, you've explored, you'll be able to decide and discover and declare your major, finish in that major your junior and senior year, and you still graduate on time in four years. So for any of you that are sitting there today and you're just worried, okay, I'm here in these schools, they're so overwhelming, I'm not sure what I wanna do, our academic exploration program really might be a, a nice fit. To me, takes that weight right off your shoulders. Our most competitive major that we do offer is our nursing program. That's a direct, set, a direct entry uh, program. So you're gonna take those nursing classes over the course of your four years, starting right away your freshman year. 
Switch to the next one. Our actual application process is very similar to what you've heard so far in the presentations. Um, and that means that you're going to be able to apply for free through the Common App or through our um, university website. We're rolling admissions, so we don't have any deadlines. Uh, although if you're you know, going into your senior year, I say Halloween's a good time to submit that application. If you're senior right now and you want to apply, feel free, you can still send us those. We have a ton of scholarships as a private institution. You know, I've heard, you've heard in here already today, don't let the sticker prices at these schools scare you and turn you off and say, no, I don't want to go there, it's too expensive. What you're seeing right now is a declining market of college students, especially in New York State. So a lot of these schools are becoming competitive um, and a lot of our merit-based scholarships are gonna mean that the price point when you're comparing and contrasting schools um, is gonna put us in a good position. So our merit-based scholarships range from 10,000 all the way up to 23,000. We are test optional. And as a test optional student, you will still qualify for each and every single one of those merit-based scholarships. We, we do have some additional scholarships as well, like an Eagle Experience, which is a bit similar to a visit grant you apply um, and you visit and connect with the counselor, you get some 1500 bucks, along with a couple other ones that we have on here as well. Campus life, uh, we're a big residential campus as well, seven different housing options, ton of different opportunities for you to get involved. Uh, but what's really nice is we are a division one institution. So um, a lot of sports going on, hockey, basketball, um, some club sports too that are incredibly popular, like men and women's club rugby, uh, to be able to kind of get you out here and uh, keep it in shape. Um, and then we have a hundred different clubs. You know, our biggest piece of advice, I'm sure our, each admissions counselor here will give you is if you hit one of our campuses, get involved in at least one club. So having over a hundred of them to choose from uh, is a nice opportunity. Ag University is open for in-person visits. Um, again, nice drive. You can take the 90 right up over to uh, just past Buffalo um, and up and see us by the falls here. Um, you can see us Monday through Friday, uh, three times a day for tours. We also have tours on the weekend as well. We have some Saturday visits coming up uh, this month and next month. Uh, but we also, as many schools, we have a ton of virtual opportunities for you to connect um, with us online, just like we're doing today. But we do miss you and we, we'd like to see students in person um, when we plan to be back um, in person this fall. As a bunch of these admissions counselors have said, please, the biggest thing is we don't bite. We want to be able to help you through this process. You have all worked so hard. Uh, so if you have any questions, you deserve the answers. Please feel free to ask us. So thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Niagara University. That was great to learn a little bit more about your campus. We are going to hear now from Emmanuel College whenever you are ready. Great. Awesome. Let me pull up my screen and we can get started. Great. So hello, everyone. I'm Olivia Fotoraro. I'm an admissions counselor at Emmanuel College. Here is just my contact information. Like everyone else has said, definitely feel free to shoot an email if you have any questions or drop them in the Q&A box below. So a lot of schools, you know, say they're close to Boston or they're in the greater Boston area. We are right in the city. We're right down the street from Fenway Park and then the Longwood Medical Center is right behind us. So Boston Children's is back there, Beth Israel, some of the best hospitals in the world, which is pretty cool. So we have a pretty, you know, a school that's on the smaller end or a small Catholic liberal arts school. We have about 1900 undergrad coming from 35 different states and 42 different countries. We have four years of housing available on campus, which is pretty unique, like I said, considering we are right in Boston. Um, that's available for all four years. You have your typical freshman res halls, you know, double, single, triple rooms, things like that. We also have a new res hall that's all apartment style. Um, the vast majority of students live on campus all four years. So over 85% of our total student population lives on campus and over 90% of freshmen live on campus. So lots of people living here. It's definitely a tight knit community. We have 70 different major minor programs and they're split up into our five academic schools. So you can see we have business management, we have education, humanities and social sciences, nursing, which is our newest school and science and health. Emmanuel offers internships. Everyone has to do an internship, at least one before they graduate. More than half of students will do more than one internship. And this all kind of fits into our experiential learning opportunities. We have a lot of research opportunities as well. Research can start as early as freshman year at Emmanuel. We're a smaller school. 
like I said, 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, average class size is about 20, um, and the max class size is about 30. So we don't have lecture halls, <laughs> you're not going to be in a class with 500 people, you know, trying to learn something. Again, it's tight knit. You're going to get to know your professors, and that definitely fits into the whole research and internship part of all this, too. So, like I said, everyone has to do at least one internship, but you're not left hanging. You're going to get a career advisor. Starting freshman year, all freshmen take a class that goes over cover letters and resumes, interview prep, all that good stuff so that you guys feel prepared, um, you know, going out and looking for those internships. All these internships and research are leading to great job and grad school outcomes for our students. So employment rate a year after graduation is 96%. Grad school placement rate is 92%. Um, a lot of our students, you know, are sticking around the Boston area. <laughs> they come here and love it and don't want to leave. Um, most of our students, are their internships are also within two miles of campus. Again, there's just so many opportunities right in the city for students to take advantage of, you know, jobs and internships and things like that. But there's also just so many other things going on. You know, you have sports, cultural events, music events, all kinds of different things happening. We have 16 Division Three sports, which you guys can see up here. We also have a bunch of intramural sports as well. This is a good time to mention, too, that we are in a consortium of schools called the Colleges of the Fenway. It's Emanuel, Simmons, Whitworth Institute of Technology, Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, and Mass College of Art and Design. So five schools on the Fenway neighborhood. And we do a lot with them in our mural sports being one of those things. Um, but we also, you know, you can cross register classes between the schools really easily. That doesn't cost any more. We can use each other's campus facilities, things like that. But we do a lot of clubs and activities and, like I said, sports and things, too, all together. We also have three gyms on campus, which is nice. Uh, we're in a nice part of the city, too. I don't know how familiar everybody is with Boston, but we're not too far from the Charles River. There's always people walking and biking out there. Um, like I said, just always something going on and definitely lots of space to get outside. So we have over 100 different student clubs and activities on campus. This list is kind of growing and evolving all the time. You can start your own club if you want, um, but we have cultural organizations, we have academic clubs, there's Zumba, there's a ukulele club, there's knitting, pretty much anything you can think of, we have it. And this isn't even, you know, thinking about all the things there are to do in Boston. You get those discount Red Sox tickets. You can go see the Bruins, the Celtics. They do discount for different theater shows that come through the Boston Ballet, all kinds of different things going on. Community service is also a big part of what we do on campus. So over 80% of students participate in community service. That's not a requirement. You know, it's just something that students are interested in and passionate about. Um, last year, students did about 50,000 hours of community service, which is a lot <laughs> for a pretty small school. So that's definitely something people like to get involved with. Here are just some requirements to apply, pretty standard. We're also on the Common App. It's free for everyone. You don't have to worry about that. We will get your application essay. We'll get your transcripts from any high schools you've attended. So if you've transferred at all, we will see all of those grades. Um, we require two letters of rec one from a guidance counselor and then one from a teacher. Um, we are test optional. Been that way for about five or six years. The only change with that, um, like I said, nursing is one of our newer programs. So before this year, um, we did require test scores for nursing. For fall 2021, we did not. For fall 2022, we're still trying to um, come up with that final decision, but you guys should definitely hear pretty shortly about that. And then just some deadlines, early action deadlines are non-binding. I definitely recommend people apply early just so you can kind of be done with it and enjoy senior year. And if anyone is interested in nursing, definitely, definitely recommend applying early just because it is direct entry. Um, it's a very competitive program. But that pretty much wraps it up. Again, just my contact information below. Um, and of course, if there's any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A as well. But thanks for joining us. Awesome. Well, thank you, Emmanuel College. That was great. And now we are going to transition to our last uh, presentation of today's event, and we're going to hear from Rochester Institute of Technology. Take it away when you are ready.
Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Emblidge. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions. We've got a lot to cram into these next six minutes. So I'm gonna uh, channel my inner auctioneer and try and get through as much of this as possible. RIT is located in suburban Rochester, New York, just across town from Nazareth College, who you already heard from. Uh, so we are in a safe suburban setting about six miles south of downtown. We're a pretty large university, especially for a private university with more than 16,600 students on campus. Of those, uh, about 13,000, more than 13,000 are undergraduate students. We have more than 2,600 international students, about 2,000 who identify as African-American, Latin American, or Native American. And then we have another form of diversity you won't find many places. We have more than 1,000 students on campus who are deaf, or hard of hearing, and that's not random. One of our nine colleges is NTID, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Our students are coming to us from all 50 states and more than 90 countries, yet our average class size is only about 22 to 23 students and our student faculty ratio is 13 to one. Even though we are an institute of technology, we really are a comprehensive university offering a wide range of programs, as you can see on the right hand side here. Our nine colleges include typical STEM based colleges like computing, engineering, engineering technology, science, and also a separate college for the health sciences. But we also have a great college of art and design with programs in areas like film and animation. We have a college of business and we also have a college of liberal arts. Uh, so more than 90 degree programs to choose from. We also have a long list of combined bachelor master's programs you can apply to uh, at RIT. And these are accelerated that give you the chance to get both degrees in a shorter period of time. One of the key things to know about RIT is that we are very career oriented. We want to give you a great education, but we also want to prepare you for what's next after you graduate. And we do that through various forms of experiential learning, but the one we're known best for is our co-op program. What's a co-op? A co-op is an internship, but whereas internships can be full-time or part-time, paid or unpaid, co-ops are full-time, co-ops are paid. And our co-op program is almost 110 years old now. We have more than 3,400 corporate partners worldwide. This slide shows you how co-op is integrated into a sample curriculum at RIT. Some programs might only require a single co-op or a couple co-ops and can still be completed in four years like business. Other programs require multiple co-ops that basically equal a year and those become five-year programs like engineering, computer science, engineering technology, but you're still only paying four years of tuition. And there's a lot of advantages to a co-op based education in terms of getting the chance to apply what you're learning while it's still fresh in a professional work setting. You're getting paid. Uh, you're not limited to Rochester because you're not trying to take classes. Our students co-op all over the world. You're building up your resume and it's very common for students to get job offers from companies they've done co-ops with. We are also a research university and uh, we offer a lot of opportunities for undergraduate research. If you find a faculty member who's doing research that interests you, seek him or her out and say, hey, how can I get involved? We also offer opportunities around the world, like other schools. Some of our study abroad programs right now are on hiatus until the world is a safer place. But we have our own international campuses. RIT has campuses in Croatia, Kosovo, and Dubai. And we also partner with two universities in China. We also have faculty-led programs and traditional study abroad programs that students can take advantage of. We're also a hub for innovation and entrepreneurship. And this has become something I've really come to love about RIT in the last few years. If you are a maker, an inventor, an entrepreneur, a creative type, you're gonna find a lot of support for your ideas at RIT. One example is Tiger Tank. If you like the TV show Shark Tank, we have our own competition each year called Tiger Tank, where students are competing for cash and scholarship prizes. In terms of campus life, we have more than 300 student clubs and organizations putting on hundreds of events each year. We do have Greek life, fraternities and sororities, about 10% of our students are involved in those. In terms of athletics, we are primarily a division three school. We have 24 men's and women's varsity sports, but hockey, Hockey is division one, both men's and women's hockey, and it's a big source of school spirit. Separate from these though, we also have club sports, intramural sports, and a lot of recreational activities you can get involved in. If you're into the performing arts as I am, 
Uh, that is something that's really growing at RIT. We're now offering performing arts scholarships. Uh, we're going to be getting two new buildings in the next few years that further support uh, the performing arts. And it's something that about a thousand of our students are currently involved in dance, music, theater, improv, juggling. <laughs> There's a lot you can get involved in. When you apply to RIT, there's three different tracks you can go down. The most common is to apply directly to the major that you want. Graphic design, accounting, mechanical engineering, packaging science, whatever it might be. The second is to apply to a specific college without declaring a major right away. Maybe you know you wanna go into business, but you don't know if you want accounting or finance or marketing, you could apply to the business exploration option. The third path is our broader exploration program called university exploration, which gives you the chance to explore majors across different colleges before declaring your major. When we review applications, these are the factors that we're considering, your academic record, your test scores, recommendations, activities, essay, and for some programs, a portfolio. We do also offer admissions interviews and we do pay attention to demonstrated interest. I forgot to set my stopwatch, but I think my time is about up. So here is my contact information. Please reach out to me if you have any questions and please consider a campus visit. We are open for campus tours. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rochester Institute of Technology. That was fantastic. It was so great to hear from all of these fantastic campuses today. And now we're going to take advantage of having these experts here with us to get their advice on a few topics as we move into a brief Q&A. Now I have a few questions prepared, but just keep in mind that that Q&A is still open so that you can get your questions submitted as well. So I'm going to share my screen very briefly and ask our first question for the panel, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go in the same order, kicking it off with Kyuka. My advice um, for this specific question is try and talk with a professor. Uh, whether you can meet with them in person or you can meet with them virtually. I know we have a lot of students that are interested in that. It really gives you a feel of who your professor could one day be. Um, if you like the way, you know, they teach, if you like the sounds of that program, you know, do you connect with it? Um, as well as try and see if you can talk with a student. Uh, we have Wolf Pals at CUCA where you can chat with a current student in your major um, and it really can kind of help you decide and kind of see the student perspective. So that's my biggest advice. That's great advice, thank you. Lemoyne College, what's your advice? Thank you, I'd really recommend taking some time to think about what you're looking for in college, right? Like when you walk into the classroom, what do you wanna see? How many people do you wanna be in class with? How much access do you wanna to have to professors? Do you want a large lecture hall with hundreds of other peers or do you wanna just have a couple other kids in class with you? So I think I would really recommend taking some time to reflect and then looking at schools that offer what you're looking for, right? Um, and to really consider what works for you what you're seeking um, and what you think would be the best environment that you would thrive in. And likewise, I think talking with professors and students as well, Kyla, that was great advice, thank you. Awesome. Nazareth College, what's your tip? Um, I think um, the students are the best resources you can get. Uh, get, you know, I know sometimes it's hard, especially if you're traveling from further away to find um, somebody you might know on a college campus, but, I'll never forget when my daughters were looking at schools, I often made it a point to get off the beaten path of the tour and just find a random student and ask them questions because then I think you get the true character of the campus that you're looking for. See how they are because with all due respect to student tour guides and ambassadors, you know, ours do a great job and I know they do it elsewhere, but I think sometimes if you wanna get that organic feel of what a campus is really like, try to get off the beaten path and talk to a student, a random student. Fantastic, thank you. Niagara University, what is your advice for this question? Yeah, and we've heard some great advice so far. Absolutely, all of those things are amazing and, and you should keep doing that. To keep adding to your list here, one, definitely housekeeping item, check your email for sure. I mean, we're gonna email you if you're missing something or we're gonna let you know that we have a nice opportunity for you. So definitely keep, keep up and checking on that. Uh, but my second piece is just visit over and over and over again. Typically, a student that's interested in a school will visit two to three times. So if you, you're narrowed it down uh, between your junior and senior year, are you going to do the same campus tour three times in a row? I really hope not. That sounds so boring. So all of us at each school 
we have campus tours, we have open houses, we have accepted student events, we have all these different types of visits for you to come back and see campus in a different way. You know, see it personally on a tour, come to open house where there's panels and faculty and students, and then an accepted student reception is an idea, okay, I think I'm going here, let's meet other students that are coming. So just keep visiting, keep going through there. And like I said, definitely check your email. Um, and then my last, I know there's three things that I know I'm supposed to only give one, but just again, reach out to admissions. We're all here to help you. I mean, look at us, we're all smiling and we're here today to give you information. So we just wanna be as helpful as we can. Awesome. Well, I know we all really appreciate that, appreciate that advice. I don't know if the last institutions will be a little upset that you took a lot of good ones, but I trust they've got other ones to give as well. So Emmanuel College, what is your advice? So I think my biggest one is don't be swayed by what your friends are doing or maybe where everyone else in your class is going. I was talking to a student this morning whose decision was being a little bit swayed maybe by friends. Um, you have to go with what's right for you, go with your gut. Sometimes it really is just a feeling you get. Um, so try to ignore what everyone else is doing and just go with what feels right for you. See, plenty of good advice left to give. Awesome. I know it's hard to go last, but Rochester Institute of Technology will have you close this out for us. Thanks very much. I think one of the things you'll hear mentioned a lot is fit. Um, finding a school that is a good fit for you, for your interests. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the school that has the highest rankings in US News and World Report or the schools that everyone has heard of. Um, and it's not necessarily the schools that have the best D1 sports programs and things like that. It's finding the school that's the right size, it's the right setting. When you visit that campus, you meet the students, you meet faculty, and you say, yes, this is a place I think I'll be comfortable calling home for the next four or five years. Um, try not to fall in love with the school just based on their website. Uh, it is important to visit, and I know that's especially tough during a pandemic, but or even virtual tours, anything like that is going to help. Um, and give you a better idea about whether, again, it's a place you'd be comfortable calling home. Awesome. Well, everyone who's attending here today is just so fortunate to be able to hear this advice you gave, just such phenomenal advice. I've heard a lot of folks talk about their advice, and I think this is the best panel um, full of good tips for our college seekers. So with that, I am actually going to wrap us up um, because I think that we should end on that fantastic high note. I wanna thank so much all of our wonderful presenters today. And I also want to thank everyone who was able to join us, whether you are here live right now or you are catching this on the replay, we're so grateful that you decided to join us and learn about these institutions. Just a quick note that when you close today's sessions, you will see a very quick four question survey and we appreciate any feedback you can give about today's event. And then finally, there is one more session happening today. There's another set of uh, presentations happening tomorrow. And then within about a week, all of these sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash C-A-S-D-A-N-Y. I put that link in the chat for you all. Thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. <laughs>